I think I found the perfect Mac. If you'd asked me right at the start of Marcos Reviews which Mac would be the least interesting to cover, I would have said the Mac Mini, because back then, well, it was getting a bit long in the tooth, Apple didn't seem to care about it, and there were no meaningful updates. Then, in December 2020, the M1 chip arrived, they put it into the Mac Mini, and everything changed. Suddenly, we had this really powerful, affordable, incredible, headless Mac, which you just needed to add a mouse, keyboard, and monitor to, and you had an absolute stellar setup. Then, earlier this year, they put the M2 Pro chip into this one, which I've been using for the last three months, and I can confirm, well, in fact, I know it's just the best Mac you can buy now. And I know that loads of you are still trying to work out whether to go for the M2 Pro Mac Mini over the M2 Mac Mini, the M1 24-inch iMac, or more importantly, the M1 Max and M1 Ultra Mac Studio. So in this video, I'm going to help you answer that question. But first, I do have another Mac Mini here. This is the M1 Mac Mini that I pretty much built this business with. It means so much to me. It is still a fantastic computer, but I've got no use for it. It's sitting in the studio being unused, which gave me an idea. Why not give it away? So within the next two weeks, I'm going to run a giveaway for this exact M1 Mac Mini. All you need to do is follow me on Instagram and keep an eye on my stories. I'll put a link in the description. But in the meantime, let's get into why the M2 Pro Mac Mini, I think, is Apple's best Mac. So who is the M2 Pro Mac Mini for? I completely understand the confusion here, and when I look at the comment sections for the videos that I've made already about this Mac, they are just full of people saying, why would I buy this Mac over the Mac Studio? Or if I can afford an M2 Pro Mac Mini, why not just spend a little bit more and buy myself a 14 inch MacBook Pro, which comes with a keyboard, a trackpad, and a very good display. Equally, why not just get the standard M2 Mac Mini without the Pro bit in it and just spec it up a bit? I think a lot of this confusion does come from Apple's pricing strategy, which as always does muddy the water a little bit, because it's true, if you start specking up the M2 Pro Mac Mini, you very quickly get into Mac Studio territory. However, the more time I spend with this M2 Pro Mac Mini, the more I realise that it's a lot simpler than we're giving Apple credit for. I think the M2 Pro Mac Mini that most people should go for is this one, which is the base model spec. In the UK, it's priced at £1,399. It comes with a 10-core CPU, 16-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now I've put that version of the M2 Pro Mac Mini to work on some serious video and audio editing tasks and it never falters. 16 gig of memory is fine for most people and as I've always said, you know if you need more memory and even if you spec this thing up to 32 gigabytes, it doesn't take it into Mac Studio territory. If you need more storage above that 512 gigabytes that Apple gives you with the base spec, I wouldn't spend that money with Apple. Just get yourself some external SSDs. That's what I use for editing video. Because this is a desktop machine, you can just tuck them away, it's no trouble, and it's cheaper. I think the regular M2 Mac Mini, the non-pro version, is a fantastic entry-level machine. The Mac Studio, I think has had its day, to be honest guys, I'm sorry, I don't, I just don't see Apple updating that with a new chip, which means this M2 Pro Mac Mini sits perfectly in the middle. How did it get there? Before I crack on with the rest of today's video, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is the fantastic SaneBox. And SaneBox is basically a tool for anyone who wants a much easier life dealing with email, which is everyone. It basically sits in the middle between your email provider and your email client, and it manages your incoming email with lots of very clever AI trickery before it reaches your eyes. And that means it's organizing your email inbox to make it as productive as possible for you to check your email without you having to do anything. In fact, it's so good that SaneBox promises to save you on average two hours every single week faffing about with email. And having used this for the 
last couple of months, I can confirm that it absolutely works. It basically takes your incoming email and puts anything that isn't a real person into a very specific folder, which leaves your inbox with emails that you want to deal with. You can also banish unwelcome senders for good. You can receive reminders for unanswered emails. You can snooze incoming emails, and you can even undertake a deep clean of your inbox to free up vital space. Even better news is that I've worked with Samebox to get you a $25 credit if you sign up. So to find out more, just click that link in the description. If you remain unconvinced about how good this M2 Pro Mac Mini is, I urge you to watch my recent music production test. I'll link to it above, but without giving too much away, the Logic Pro session that I managed to create on this, which was an hour long and had a ridiculous number of tracks on there doing all sorts of complicated things, was absolutely mind-boggling. And it did this without getting warm, without the fans coming on, it remained completely silent, and I could still press the spacebar and the music played straight away. I've made music on Macs for many years and apart from my 16-inch MacBook Pro which is over there, I've had to use some fairly terrible hardware to get the job done and that means I've always run into performance ceilings. I've always had things crashing after a while, plugins failing, all that sort of stuff, which completely ruins the creative process if you don't have a budget for a very expensive Mac Pro or a MacBook Pro. This can do more with music production and video production than I'd ever need. And that means that every technical hurdle and barrier that I've crashed into in the past has been completely removed. If this thing can smash through audio and video tasks like it does, programmers, people people who work in design, anything where you think you need to push your Mac, you're not going to have a problem with the M2 Pro Mac Mini. Despite that, you may have one particular concern, which I'll address now. I don't know how this thing keeps moving around the studio, it's incredible. What you're probably worried about is Bluetooth issues on the M2 Pro Mac Mini. If you're not aware, the M1 Mac Mini had some horrendous Bluetooth problems with connectivity dropping and all sorts of horrible things. I had a lot of trouble with that in my old studio. I'm hoping, touch wood, that Apple has done something to fix them. Now, I am in a much bigger space these days, but regardless of that, I haven't experienced any Bluetooth issues whatsoever with this M2 Pro Mac Mini. My AirPods remain connected, there's no issues there whatsoever. These accessories, so the keyboard and the mouse, I've had no dropouts with them either. Apple has put some new Bluetooth stuff into this Mac Mini, and I'm fairly sure it's had a positive impact. Don't hold me to it, please. That's my three month report on the Bluetooth issues on the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I don't think there are any. Anyway, I think it's now time for a final conclusion. I've deliberately kept this three month review of the M2 Pro Mac Mini as short as possible. And I think the ability to do that is testament to this device itself. There's just no need for a deep dive into specs, into performance, because Apple has made such a good job with this base model version that it's just a case of go and buy it. And you can't say that about many Macs these days. Most of them need tweaking during that checkout process. But I just think the combination of storage, memory, power in terms of CPU and GPU, Apple has completely nailed it. So if you've had your eyes on this for a little while now and you keep watching videos like this, firstly, thank you, but secondly, just go and buy it. However, if you want the chance to win my M1 Mac Mini, remember to follow me on Instagram. I'll put the link in the description. And if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to the video where I really put this thing through its paces with music production.